and welcome to this second tutorial on animating cameras in After Effects. In the first tutorial we looked at some of the difficulties you can face trying to animate a camera and to resolve those issues we used a null layer with its anchor point at the top left so that you know whether you're looking at the front or the back of the null layer and we parented our camera to our null layer so that the camera inherits or uses the anchor point of the null layer for any rotation pan zooms that it might do. So what we end up doing is animating the null object and the camera then follows along using the anchor point of the null object as its center point for any animation that happens. So what we did was we animated this camera with our null object in one dimension. So we started off by animating Y. So if I put my stopwatch at zero and go to two seconds and I do one full rotation, that's 360 degrees. And then we have one rotation, one orbit around our 3D scene no problem at all. And then we wanted to see if we could put a pan over the top of the scene at the same time as we're orbiting. So we looked at our controls and we worked out that the X rotation is the one that we need to pan over the top of the scene. Just reset that. And so we click a stopwatch for the pan, we go to the end, and we work out where we want it to finish. Let's say we can look at the back of the text up there, that's where we want it to finish. And then hit the home key to get to the beginning, and then when we drag our current time indicator through, we see that it goes mad. It doesn't do anything like we expected. We wanted it to do a 360 degree rotation whilst doing a pan over the top, and we lose sight of the whole thing for most of the actual animation, and it's completely useless. So there is an issue here in that we can't expect After Effects to follow the routes that we want to go. The way it is resolving the X, Y, and Z positions of rotation are not giving us the results that we want. Because After Effects, I believe, is resolving these three positions in the same way, regardless of how we change them. It'll always resolve them in the same way, giving us this slightly weird result. So what we need to do is separate out X, Y, and Z and force After Effects to resolve X, Y, and Z in the order that works for us, which is not as it presently is shown in the actual layer. In fact, the best way of resolving it would probably be to have Z X and Y to achieve the results we want. Because if we have them in any other order, we end up with this slightly bizarre and weird look as something goes off scene and doesn't do what we want. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, let's turn off these stopwatches and let me explain why we need to do this. If I go to um, 3ds Max, I have two different arrows. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in values for X, Y, and Z that will be exactly the same, so I'm going to put 100 for X, 45 for Y, 200 for Z. But I'm not going to type them in in the same order. So if I've got arrow 1 and I type in 100, and I tab across to Y, put 45, Z, put 200, that's the result I get, the arrow facing up there. If I take the second one and I start at Z and I put 200, and then I go to X and I make that 100, and tab across and put 45, I end up with an arrow that's facing in a different direction. Let me just rotate around this scene. And you can see that those two arrows are not facing in the same way at all. And it's simply because of the order in which the coordinates were given. So I put X, Y, and Z, and then I put Z, X, and Y, and obviously if I had a third arrow and I did Y, Z, and X, I'd end up with something facing in another direction. It matters the orders in which a layer property are resolved. Now, After Effects will resolve them in a de facto or a default manner, regardless of what you put in when. So if I was to put three different coordinates in here, it wouldn't matter, it would always end up in the same place. Because if you like, it treats it like coordinates, or it's resolving them always in the same way, regardless of when and how you put them in. That's not what we want, because it gives us this weird result where the text goes off screen. So we need to force it to resolve in a different way and always resolve that way to give us predictable results that really suit us. So how do we do that? Well, basically, we have to add a couple more null objects. So I've already renamed this top one X rotation, and I need two more. I need Y and Z, so mash your fist Y to get another null object, and we'll call this one Z rotation, and mash your fist Y again, and we'll call this one Y rotation. Okay, so we have X, Z, and Y. Um, if we do it as it is at the moment, we'd have X at the top. 
So that's its present order, which we know doesn't work. I'm going to take all the parenting off, and we can think about what we want to do. The order that's going to work best for us is actually if we resolve a Z first, and then we resolve X, and then we resolve Y, that's the order that's going to give us the most predictable results for this type of animation. Now to make it work, we need to create a parental hierarchy. So the camera needs to parent to Z, Z needs to parent to X, and X needs to parent to Y. And that will force them to resolve in a way that operates properly. Now, all of these layers do need to be 3D, so let's make sure that they're all 3D. Now, let's do a bit of animation. Now we have a hierarchy set up. Does it matter which one I do in which order? The answer is no, it doesn't. Now we have a hierarchy, and one follows one parent and one follows the other. You can do them however you like. So let's actually start with Y rotation. So we can open up our transforms, go down to Y rotation, set a keyframe for Y rotation. Oops, that's in the wrong place, so I'll just click and drag that down to the beginning. And then with this current time indicator at the end, let's just make that one full rotation. And we can just shut that down. And then X, let's go to the end. So X, we now need it to be going over the top. So we need to make sure we've got X rotation, and we scrub it so it goes over the top so we can clearly see the text. Oh, well, that's where we want to finish. Sorry, I didn't put my keyframes in. Hit X rotation bring it back to the beginning and just hit reset. There we go. So now let's have a look when we scrub the current time indicator along. As we scrub it, it's rotating and at the same time it's going above the text. And we're able to keep a view of it all the way through. Okay. And can you see the way that the null objects are opening up? They're opening up very clearly. Now, the other thing that we can do is we can go down to Z and we can flip the image with Z rotation. So, we want nothing at the beginning. So, set the stopwatch at the beginning. And at the end, what we can do is we can take Z rotation and we can flip the image all the way around at the back. So, now we have a rotation that works for us. It rotates around the image while going over the top and also flipping the image so that it stays the right way up for us. And can you see the way that these null objects have opened up from this center point? We've got the center point, all the objects opened up from this center point, creating a very straightforward animation path. Okay, so we know that that one works. Now let's not change the values of any of these, but let's actually change the hierarchy. So I'll undo all of these so we're not parented to anything, and we'll change it to a different order. So let's now do X at the bottom, Y in the middle, and Z at the top. And let's parent the camera to X, parent X to Y, and Y to Z. Now we set up a new hierarchy. Let's watch our nulls and also see how it works. And we've gone right off screen, but you can see that these nulls are opening up in a different way to the way that they opened up before. You end up with this bizarre look that brings everything back round and doesn't even resolve at the end. So the order in which you have these layers organized is very important. And I'm just going to take them back to how they should be and move them physically in order. I know that I could just uh, redo the parenting, but I think it's important to see that we need to do Z first, followed by X. So Z at the bottom, X, and then Y. And let's now parent them up. So the camera parents to Z, Z parents to X, X parents to Y, and now let's look at our animation. Bear in mind we haven't changed any figures at all. And it opens up properly. And we end up with an animation that works. So that's how important the order is of these three nulls. Of making sure that you get them to resolve properly so that you end up with an animation that's predictable and keeps everything on screen. 
as opposed to something that's completely unpredictable. Now, bear in mind, of course, for different scenes, different 3D scenes with lots of bits and pieces going around, actually changing this order might work very well for you. But you need to understand that having these in the right order is very important. In the next tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add controllers to a fourth null object so that we can control these layers from one object and not have to worry about getting in there and making sure we choose the right rotation control every time we do an animation and also how to change your point of interest from one item to another. I hope you found this tutorial useful. My name's Andrew Davis. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.